Welcome back to Arise 360. Now, Gotti is one of the most anticipated movies of 2018. Now, the movie stares John Travolta. The film centers around John Gotti's rise to power to become the head of the infamous Gambino crime family. Kyle Stefanski plays the role of the bus boxer Anthony in the biopic. Now, our entertainment correspondent, Jessica White, sat down with Kyle to really get the scoop on the making of the film. Actor and producer Kyle Stavansky is fresh off of the Cannes Film Festival for the new hit movie, Gotti, with John Travolta. You'll need the support of all five boroughs. Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, the Bronx. Our job now is to maintain leadership. I nominate John Gotti. To the new boss! Oh. I'm so proud of you. You should be running your own crew now. Mr. Gotti, are you the head of the Gambino crime family? The head of my family. Mrs. Gotti, do you know what your husband does for a living? He provides. John's getting too much press. That can't go unchecked. So welcome to Arise 360 Behind the Scenes, Kyle. Thank you so much for having me today. Welcome, you're welcome. Now, I do want to start off with the movie Gotti. Sure. As we know, it just premiered at the Cannes Film Festival, and today is coming opening weekend. Yep. But it's been a little trouble in the making. Why did you think it took so long for this movie to hit the theaters? Man, I, I mean, years and years of uh, different actors, you know, producers being attached. The story is is just so heartfelt. I mean, it's it's history. This is This is John Gotti. The Teflon Don. It's it's very important gangster film, uh, and so I think there was there was a lot of uh, production value to it, and and there was a lot of crossover with, you know, a lot of people wanting to tell different parts of the story, and uh, I think they landed on on what felt true to me once I, you know, saw the final product. Now I know John Travolta was really the first pick, but he's also a remake. Yeah. So how was it to see him on the screen, see him shine? Because I know you worked in a few scenes with him. I did. I did. Oh, man. It was, uh, it was epic. Seeing John Travolta play John Gotti mm -hmm. was just, I, it was surreal, actually. Watching the entire film play out, he, uh, he played it to a T. Honestly, I, he, you can't be John Gotti himself, but he did as best I could, I could imagine, yeah. honestly. Yeah. yeah. Now your character, Anthony, is a boxer, but you kind of show the humanistic side of yeah. John Gotti because everyone knew him as that crime boss and that gritty street guy. Yeah. What is it that your role added to the film? To the film? Yes, um, so everyone knows John Gotti as you know this, this hardcore gangster, yeah. and most, most gangster films uh, depict these guys as sociopaths and, and killers. So. What we wanted to portray in this film was uh, why were people crying in the streets? Why was there so much uproar once he was finally indicted? How did, how did people uh, really view him? What, he was a man of the neighborhood. He took care of his people. He wasn't this crazy killer that um, you know the, uh, the government set him out to, to be. And so my character is a boxer, a prize fighter from the neighborhood who John Gotti kind of takes under his wing and he's a mentor father figure to me. And they really show uh, his humanistic side with our relationship, and not to mention the relationship with his own son. So you compile those upon each other, and it's, it's a great, uh, great add to the film. Speaking of his son, John Gotti Jr., how involved was he in telling his father's story? He was very involved. Really, yeah. This was, he was a passion project for him. He was a driving force behind it, and uh, he really wanted to tell the father-son aspect of this important, important gangster film. Because it's, it's not just this, you know, violent killer, yeah. uh, you know, that we, that we hear about. So there is a, there's a family man behind it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you mentioned gangster film, because as you know, Scarface just celebrated 35 years yeah. from the time it hit theaters. Do you think it's time now for a good good old crime drama, or, you know, it was still a little on I, edge. No, I'd like to say so. I'd definitely like to say so, especially because those are the, the films that I'm being cast in. So, yeah, that, that'd be great for me, sure. Speaking of films being cast in, tell us about the one, uh, News to Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, First We Take Brooklyn. Yes. Uh, First We Take Brooklyn is a wonderful film. Uh, I did with a, a good friend of mine, Danny A., uh -huh. um, Harvey Keitel, and Anna Lynn McCord. Uh -huh. 
and it was it's basically my my first feature breaking into the scene. Gotcha. You know, I've done a bunch of shorts and and worked with a lot of great people, but my first feature that that I worked with, you know, a legend like Harvey Keitel. I mean, yeah. come on. Um, and that was, uh, it kind of set the tone for the beginning of, of my acting career. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking these, you know, more um, rough, you know, gangster, yeah. boxer type of type of roles for right now. And you'll see, I'm going to branch off into these, you know, deep dramas um, uh -huh. next year. But That's okay. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, Ricky Quails, who is actually the trainer for you, yes. who got you set and ready, yes. you know, to be... Anthony yeah. and Gotti. What was your regimen like? What was it like to train with some? Because he's worked with Will Smith, oh, yeah. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, yeah. He's worked with some of the greats, absolutely. Um, he's hardcore, but he uh, he's also a good friend of mine. And so we, you know, have developed this relationship over time. And when he knew I was taking on this role, we kind of we went into uh, game time, you know? And, yeah. and he really pushed me. My my nutrition was, was very hardcore. Um, I lost a lot of weight. I say I lost, I don't know, maybe within, the camera adds a few pounds. <laughs> I would say, yeah, I would say I probably lost 15 pounds leading up to the film and then another 15 after that and uh -huh. continued to, uh, to lose. But it was hardcore. I mean, we train five times a week. Yeah. 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 And the director, Kevin Connolly, gave you mm. superb reviews and he said he just seen a different side with working with you yeah. and seeing you work alongside folks like the John Travolta. How was that being in the midst of Kevin? Because we know he did John Q. He did John Q. You know what? Kevin actually told me a, a very interesting story that prepped me for this John Travolta scenario. Uh -huh. um, and we sat down and, and we were going into you know the major scenes that I would be doing with John Travolta. He told me a story about when he was on the set of John Q and he had his scene with Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. Now, Denzel comes around the corner, he practices scene, run through it, memorizes lines, he was there. Mm -hmm. He was ready for it. Denzel comes around the corner, froze, just like that. And he prepped me, he's like, you're gonna, you're gonna have that moment where it's like, wait a second, this is an icon right in front of me. What am I doing? You just gotta go, you gotta be prepped for it. So I did actually slip up um, very quickly with John Travolta. I tripped up on a line, but in acting, um, you just keep going. Yeah. You, you never stop. You stay in the moment. You stay with it. And John is such an amazing actor mm -hmm. that he brought me back, and I realized what was going on. I realized that we were in the scene, and it was just, uh, you couldn't tell that there was a, a slip up at all. It okay. was a very endearing moment. And then in that set, in that split second, I remember Kevin Connolly. I remember the Denzel scenario, and then it's like Travolta brings me back. It was, it was very cool. Now I want to switch gears just a little bit to talk about Rhonda's Kiss. Now sure. This was done and made a charity, your family's charity, yep. out of the memory of your mother. Yes. Tell us about Rhonda's Kiss. So uh, my mother passed away from pancreatic cancer in November of 2014. Uh, in the aftermath of this tragedy. My family, you know, came together and we wanted to turn this negative into a positive. And through that medical odyssey and trying to save her life, we realized that we were blessed with, uh, with money mm -hmm. and we were able to go to an ends of the earth to do whatever we could to help her. Now, I realized if you weren't able to uh, keep your lights on or, yeah. you know, and battle yeah. these certain forgotten um, costs that mm -hmm. come with cancer and on top of the whole deal, it'd be impossible, next to impossible. You you know, it's yeah. like trying to, to climb a mountain and you have no on help. Top of what's, the exactly, yes. exactly. So we wanted to, you know, bring this uh, awareness mm -hmm. to light uh, about people dealing with cancer and living with mm -hmm. fighting cancer, not just um, the idea of being diagnosed and then passing away and yeah. you kind of give up. It, no, there's a fight in you. Mm -hmm. You're fighting for your life and you need all the help that you can get. Mm -hmm. So Rhonda's Kiss is there to help with the ancillary costs, you know, not the treatment itself, yes, not yes, the yes. chemo, yes. not the radiation, but everything else. Mm -hmm. Rent, child care, co-pays, you name it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we've done a lot of awareness-based events and now we're transitioning 
to a full-fledged nonprofit that does grassroots movements. Okay. We build out programs and we work with our health systems like Cleveland Clinic, Cedar sinai mm -hmm. We're looking to work with Sloan Kettering. We're going to be doing an event in New York City Absolutely. during Fashion Week this year. So okay, it's going to be fantastic. Okay. We actually, I'm exhausted because uh -huh. we just got off of our last event Wednesday night. Uh -huh. And then me and my friend Mike, my uh -huh. business partner over here, mm -hmm. we flew in the next morning, 6 a.m. for the Gaudi premiere. Really? Haven't, right. haven't slept. Yeah. yeah. Haven't yeah. slept at all. But, but, but you're putting forth the work. Yes. And that's one of the things with the Rhonda's Kiss mission is to be there for the families mm -hmm. as well as the community. So why do you think that particular mission is important? And then what else can people do to help? I think that the mission is important because uh, you, we're all here on this planet, you know, we're all here together. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have that one aspect in common is that we're here to live and we're here to enjoy this time on earth. So why not help each other out in mm -hmm. any way that we possibly can? Why not give back and why not be an example? Rhonda's Kiss is not only trying to help people, but we're trying to inspire to turn negatives into positives. We're trying to inspire to, you know, to, to put your hand out to anybody, no matter what race, socioeconomic background, doesn't matter, especially what's going on in the current climate and mm -hmm. world. I think it's extremely important. And you can help by going to rondaskiss.org. Mm -hmm. uh, you can donate all throughout the year. You can go to any of our events, um, stay updated on our social media, um, on our Instagram, Round his kiss on our Facebook, our Twitter, um, and yeah, just continue to. Now I'm gonna tell involved. the people out there because you're being a little humble. Yeah, you great. have donated up to one million dollars. That's no easy feat. Like that needs to be applauded. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Now a little birdie it. also told me that you and your partner are mm -hmm. working on some upcoming films. Yes, here. yes, yes. We are. We are. Um, I can tell you uh, about one of them, actually. It's, uh, it's the story of how organized crime was discovered in America in, uh, in 1957 in a little town called Appalachian, New York. Mm -hmm. It's a small town of a little over 200 people, and it was the biggest sit-down of the bosses of all bosses. Yeah. And at that point, organized crime was not recognized. The government would not recognize it in America. And this, uh, this officer, basically, in this little town of 200-some people, stumbled upon one of the biggest busts that ever existed. Mm -hmm. And most people are not familiar with this, and it's huge. So we're going to uh, bring it to life. We're going to tell a story to bring that to life. All yeah. right. And we're approaching Father's Day. So cool. you as a new father, yeah. go ahead and tell us what you want to leave your legacy for your son. Man, um, I just want... Uh, I want my son to just to understand humanity, mm -hmm. just to understand what I explained a little bit earlier that we're all here to uh, to just enjoy life and, and help out each other, you know, just just be a good person and uh, and give back as much as you can. Absolutely, Kyle Fancy, thank you for joining us, and be sure to check Kyle out and Gotti. His character is Anthony, and it's in theaters this weekend. We'll be right back on the Rise Three Hundred and Sixty.